Hi there, I'm Mr. Tastic, and in this episode, we're going to be diving in on teaching the elements of art. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. elements of art that I think are a little bit simpler and then use that to and then and kind of progress into ones that are a little bit more challenging and challenging. So scaffolding the elements of art because some naturally lead into other ones or you might need to know about some of them such as line and value in order to create the illusion of say texture. So I like to think about the order in which I, a, a strategic order in the which in which I implement or teach the elements of art. That way I can allow my students to be more successful. Um, and then the way, the way I teach it is that the previous element taught is going to lead into the next one. So it's going to lead into the next one, lead into the next one. So it's again scaffolding off, learning or building on learning um, in order to teach it. So in the order I like to teach the elements of art, start off with line, so you need to line as a moving dot. Um, line can be uh, taught at a various you know levels, right from K to 12, and it can look very different. So no matter what grades you're teaching, you can you can adjust this for the grades you're specifically teaching. Um, but you're going to start with line, teach what line is, experiment with line, teach the lessons on line, and you're going to teach value. So then you're going to teach about value. You can even teach um, how to create value um, using line. And then you're going to teach color. So color, you need to know value in order to teach color, right? Because you'll have, you know, it's the next building block. So then I teach about color. Um, after that, I teach um, shape. So I'll teach about shape. And then, of course, right after shape, I do form, right? Because it's three-dimensional versions of shapes. <laughs> so forms. Um, and then, of course, your organic and your geometric forms. And same with shapes. And then that will lead into space. And then finally, I end with texture. Yeah. Um, and then I can make texture as big or as small as I need to, depending on how much time there is. Um, and also depending on the grades, right? Like I might spend more time on texture in the upper grades versus the lower grades. But just understanding what texture is is really going to um, start create, allowing for more detail and depth to be added to students' artworks. Um, next, we're going to explore and experiment with each of the elements. So why don't you come up with your order? Right, so your order, so line, value, color, um, shape, form, space, texture. Then you're going to um, explore and experiment with the elements for with your students, right? So I'll teach you the first element, so I'll introduce line, right? For example, then I'm going to do my next lesson will be um, kind of exploring and experimenting with the elements. So then you're going to have, just have uh, different micro lessons or um, ex exploration lessons, um, trying out that element with different art mediums, perhaps, um, giving some more choice based prompts, and they're just going to practice understanding that element and getting to understand it and learn about it and apply it um, without any assessment happening. So, this is not the assessment stages, this is a learning stage, right? So, they're going to learn first, and this is, these are their opportunities to learn and to get to know um, the element uh, that you're teaching. All right, so before we continue, my question for you is this. Um, what questions do you have about teaching the elements of art? Teaching the elements of art. So what questions do you have when it comes to teaching the elements of art? Let me know in the comment section below the video and I'll do my best to answer all of your questions and hopefully help, hopefully help you out. All right, number three, after you are done experimenting with that element of art, right? And you're gonna do this for every time you teach a new element of art. You're gonna introduce and you're gonna experiment. The third step will be to do an art project, right? So this will be where students create an artwork. 
Um, and this is where they're going to show what they've learned, show what, they, show what you know, uh, and this is what you will uh, make your assessment on. So right, they have had their opportunity to learn, now they're going to do an R work, and this is where you're going to do your assessment. So assessment does not need to be done on everything, right? You're going to give, be fair, you're gonna give them time to learn an experiment first, and now you're going to do an artwork and then they can show you what they know um, through creating their artwork and then if you want to have an art statement paired with it or some reflections so they can even talk about it um, or expand further um, and then you're going to make your assessment on that all right and then throughout the year um, as you demo anything, so number four, so as you demo anything, any other art projects, even if it's not an element of art project, um, as you're doing any art projects, um, no matter what medium it is, even ceramics, you're going to, as you're working, be like, oh, look, this is an example of value, right? Um, so anytime you're looking at art, so art from art history, you're looking at like, whatever, Frida Kahlo, for example, um, with Jean-Michel Basquiat, you can point out, oh, what elements of art do you see? Or like, oh, I noticed that this artist used value on their still life of lemons. Blah, 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 blah. Um, do you notice any other elements of art that are in this work, right, in this painting? Um, oh yeah, I see that too. Maybe do a think picture. What elements of art do you see in this artwork? Um, and that way you're continuously talking about it and reinforcing it throughout the year. Um, so when you get to the end of your assessments um, or in state testing, they will have been practicing it the whole year. Um, so that should make it easier, right? You're reinforcing it. And you're also seeing it being applied in real time, right? So like how it's an actual tool, it's a part of it, not just like one artwork, one element. One artwork, one element, right? They actually all technically have a lot of them integrated if you start pointing it out, right? So that's why I've, even if I'm doing like a, a pumpkin seasonal um, art lesson, I may be like, oh, look, we're creating this. We're using the element of our value and line in here to do blah, 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 blah. And look, this is an organic shape, whatever, right? So you're always using these the same vocabulary throughout the year. And that way, when you get to assessment, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so if you're looking for some fully planned entire art units for each of the grades, so um, you can check out my Elements of Art art units. Um, they will be linked to below the description of the video. I have actually created an art unit for each grade, K to eight. So there's a kindergarten Elements of Art unit, there is a grade one Elements of Art unit, there's a grade two Elements of Art unit, grade six, grade seven, grade eight Elements of Art unit, and I have differentiated them obviously with the artworks within them, right? Each unit comes with your introductory activities and video to introduce the elements of art, um, all your experimentative um, play-based um, explorations um, and warm-up activities. They provide all of your student choice artworks and tasks uh, and a unit art project and then obviously seven art projects one project for each of the elements of art are all included but to differentiate it um, and to scaffold it and so there's no um there's no uh repetition if you teach elements of art every year and you have lots of grades each one is a different theme so um animals is for kindergarten and then there's farm um, then there's insects for grade three i think it is grade four i think is reptiles grade five is like space i think um the older grades like grade eight is like um light versus dark grade seven is like weather so they're all teaching elements of art but through different themes or lenses um so that's you know, tying in lots of different things. <laughs> so if you want to check those out, they are in the description of the, they're linked to in the description of the video, as well as my other elements of art resources. I have tons of different, I have lots of different elements of art resources from workbooks to digital um, resources. Um, and then you can click that one big link that says all elements of art resources, check them all out, click that one link, and then it'll take you to that. And you can find all my different units, everything, everything under the sun available for that to make your planning simple with all your examples, your rubric, your assessment, your lesson plans, all fully done. You don't have to do anything except for doing the fun part, which is the teaching. So if you want to check them out, make sure you head on over to the links in the description of this video and browse for some ideas and get inspired or art inspired. Get inspired! 
and then I will see you in the next episode, which is art projects for back to school. You can watch that video by, by clicking the link above or in the description of this video. And then please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to this channel because that's going to help me or allow me to continue to create these videos for you. So please, please, please help me out by liking this video, sharing it and subscribing to this channel. Um, so that I can continue to do this for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video, Art Projects for Back to School.